Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Sahar Paksad. I'm the Marketing and Communications Coordinator at Clone Crippen Berger. Uh, this is the very first of KCB's webinar presentations, and we are glad to have you join us. Today's webinar is about the design and construction of the Hamata Tailings Dam at the Hidden Valley Mine in Papua New Guinea. Before we begin, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping items. Uh, at the bottom of your screen are multiple application widgets. All the widgets are resizable and movable, so feel free to move them around to get the most out of your desktop space. If you have any questions during the webcast, you can submit them through the Q&A box. We will capture all of your questions and we'll answer them after the webinar by email. As well, a copy of today's presentation is available to download from the resource list, which you can access at the bottom of your screen. If you come across any technical issues, you can find answers in the help widget also at the bottom of your screen. Lastly, an on-demand recording of this webinar will be available and can be accessed using the same audience link that was sent to you earlier. You will get an email about it as well. So today's presenter is Mark Renoud. Mark is a senior engineering geologist at Clone Crippen Berger. He has over 20 years experience in earth science and environmental disciplines and is based out of KCB's Brisbane office. Over to you, Mark. Good morning. My name is Mark Reynard, and I'd um, like to talk about the design and construction of the Hamata Tailings Dam at the Hidden Valley Mine in Papua New Guinea. Um, this was a presentation for ANCOL, the Australian National Committee of Large Dams, presented in Australia last year. And my co-authors were David Johns of our Brisbane office and Len Murray, the company president. So just as background, the Hidden Valley Mine is an open pit gold and silver mine located about 210 kilometers northwest of Port Moresby, which is the capital of Papua New Guinea. Um, the Hidden Valley Mine is owned by Harmony Gold. Harmony own 100% of the mine. This mine used to be a 50-50 joint venture owned by Newcrest of Australia and Harmony of South Africa. The Amata Tailing Storage Facility is a project that KCB have been involved in for the last decade. The two orange um, landforms indicated in this slide are the open pits at the Hidden Valley Mine. The one in the southeastern corner is the Hidden Valley Caveroy Pit, which is the ore body of the, of the Hidden Valley Mine. And the one up in the northwestern corner is Amata Pit, which is the source area for waste used for tailings dam construction. These two pits are about six kilometers apart. The Hidden Valley Caveroy pit is at an elevation of about 2,700 meters above sea level, whilst the Hamata pit is at an elevation of about 2,000 meters above sea level. And the Hidden Valley, the Harmony Tailing Storage Facility, our TSF, is located immediately south of the Hamata pit. Tailings from um, the process plant is placed hydraulically in the dam at about 30% solids by weight. Just some uh, aerial photographs to give you some perspective. The large photograph on the left is an aerial photograph looking generally towards the north. And in the immediate foreground, you can see the open pit of the Hidden Valley Caveroy ore body. And in the distant background, you can see the dam, which is the Hamata Tailings Storage Facility. And the Hamata Pit, which is the source area for material used for dam construction, is um, located immediately to the north of the dam, just down below in the topography. The ore from um, Hidden Valley Cavalry, HVK Pit, is transported in a conveyor about six kilometers. This is a, a pipe conveyor that um, has its start up at the, um, at the crusher in the photograph on the top right. This pipe conveyor then transports the material all the way down to the bottom at the process plant, which is located immediately adjacent to the tailings dam. 
And that's the photo in the bottom right. Photograph of the TSF. The two embankments. On the left we've got the saddle dam and on the right we've got the main dam. The approved design currently has a maximum elevation of RL2000 and uh, once it's full it will have a maximum storage capacity of 40 million tons of tailings. The main dam embankment is higher than the saddle dam and has a crest to tow uh, height of 145 meters. Embankment construction is using um, the downstream method and the source of the material as indicated previously is the Hermita pit and starter dam construct construction commenced during 2007. As background for the Amata TSF design basics, the upstream shell is a low permeability zone constructed of weathered rock, and the downstream side is a free draining side constructed of fresh rock. Um, the upstream and downstream slopes have a better design batter of three horizontal to one vertical. In between these two um, upstream and downstream zones is a sub-vertical chimney drain constructed of crushed aggregate generated on the mine, and this separates um, these two zones. It intercepts seepage to maintain the drain conditions in the downstream shell. The filter has a dual function that prevents piping of fines um, from the weathered zone, and it's also designed to not retain a crack to have an element of self-healing capabilities should any deformation be experienced in the dam shell. The chimney drain is connected by a series of under drains that discharges to the toe of both embankments. Here's a cross-section detail for the main dam, uh, the upstream on the left-hand side of the image of weathered rock and the downstream on the right of crushed fresh rock. And you can see the chimney drain alignment through um, the middle of the dam separating these two zones. It's interesting to see that this drain has been constructed um, in the downstream environment at the foundation of the dam, and then the seepage that generates that um, is intercepted by the drain discharges in the downstream environment in the bottom right of this image. Similarly, in detail of the saddle dam, a similar function with the um, upstream weathered rock on the left of the image and the uh, downstream crushed rock on the right with the chimney drain in the middle. One of the key differences between these two, the saddle dam and the main dam embankments is that the saddle dam in this image is keyed against a ridge line at the downstream environment to provide additional stability to this landform under seismic loading. Uh, you will notice um, in this slide that the foundation in this part of the saddle dam is liquefiable alluvium and lacustrine sediments. This is an aerial image of the main dam, looking at the downstream environment. Uh, the foundation of the uh, main dam is boulder colluvium, which has been deemed non-liquefiable. Uh, uh, the southern end of uh, the main dam, in the top right of this, this image, is buttressed by the Valley View Waste Rock Dump, um, which is a temporary landform uh, used to accommodate all waste during dam construction and the long-term intention of the Valley View Waste Rock Dump is to provide capping to cover the TSF to meet closure conditions. An aerial photograph of the saddle dam. You can see this is a natural ridge line. There's a valley right at the bottom of the image which is the Watut River system and the saddle dam is keyed up against this ridge which we refer to as the Watut ridge line. Um, the tailings dam has been constructed in, a, in, an, in an old valley that was formed by um, a local river called the Pahima Creek. The alluvial sediments from this Pahima River system form the foundations beneath the saddle dam which is liquefiable and the saddle dam geometry is designed to establish a counterweight design where under liquefiable conditions, the embankment would move as a block keyed into the Watut ridge line and thereby minimize internal deformation of the dam zones. This is a photograph looking towards the north. 
So what we're seeing is the saddle dam in the middle of the image and closer to the camera is the Hamata pit which is the source area for borrow material for dam construction and the river system in the immediate foreground is the Watut drainage system. In the distant background up in the top left you can see um, some disturbance to the mountainous terrain and that is the Hidden Valley Cabaroy pit which is the ore body for the Hidden Valley mine. So during today's discussion, I wanted to focus a bit more on construction challenges. The Hamata tailings dam is located in, a, in, a high, in an area that enjoys high annual rainfall between 2.5 and, and 3 meters a year. The rainfall is of tropical intensity and there's no clear dry and wet season. Effectively, the difference between winter and summer is the temperature of the rain. The area is seismic, seism seismically active and this steep terrain is um, synonymous with narrow deep valleys and a very deep tropical weathering profile. The observation methods used during construction of the tailings dam uh, with ongoing challenges for the dam designers and considering the conditions, the key design compliance criteria that uh, require ongoing input from KCB is uh, management of the dam freeboard and meeting the seismic stability requirements. So on the surface water management side, um, the, really, the, the only effective way to manage surface water in these tropical conditions is to keep raising the dam crest in advance of the rising pond levels or treating the water and then discharging treated water into the receiving environment once it is meeting um, environmental compliance criteria. So the photograph on the left is showing the process plant where water is extracted from the pond treated and discharged, and the photo on the right is an image of the main dam uh, crest showing the freeboard um, between the embankment and the pond. So as you can appreciate in these tropical conditions, there are some significant earthwork challenges, high rainfall uh, being probably the most problematic. Um, saturated ground conditions create ongoing problems, especially where fine grain waste is placed on the dam shell. Um, the effective way to manage this is to restrict your uh, certain placement activities to uh, dry weather and wet weather fronts, depending on the material being used, to uh, seal work fronts off effectively so that when it does rain, that the placement fronts are not saturated and during construction to establish decent crossfalls so that when it is raining the water drains off the construction front as quickly as possible. It's critical that saturated work fronts are not trafficked. Um, isolate all construction fronts from all vehicle activities to restrict the damage to saturated environments under wet conditions. It is, um, at, at Hidden Valley we have um, a tailings dam with a number of bench levels and effectively during these wet weather periods the lower bench levels become a drainage sump so all the rainfall in the area reports to these low-lying areas which take a long time to dry there's a, there's a significant delay in, in construction opportunities in these areas after rainfall so they become focused um, construction fronts a targeted construction front under dry weather conditions and they become no-go zones under wet conditions so there's a very narrow construction window where you can actually get into these areas um, to raise them to meet the design requirements. So it becomes if critical that the construction team have a clearly identified set of wet and dry weather placement fronts and that these are effectively managed to make optimum use of these limited windows. An example of a few wet weather placement fronts that um, are used at Hidden Valley include the um, emergency spillway, which is constructed down the side of the main dam um, gorge. Realistically, you, you, the wet weather and dry weather placement fronts is really dictated to by um, the material. It's, it's, it's easier to place the coarse-grained rock material under, under during wet weather conditions, and the fine-grained material is restricted to the dry weather conditions. Here's 
here's an example of, of fresh rock being placed on the downstream toe of the dam during rainfall at the saddle dam. So this downstream rock environment is the riprap protection that is the outermost layer of the dam and it's designed to protect the dam shell from erosion and meet the closure conditions for the tailings dam. So this rock armor construction typically represents a priority wet weather placement front where construction activities will have very little impact on, on the dam shell condition. This is what happens when we get it wrong. This is the upstream environment of the dam crest and it's very apparent that an old placement front has been completely destroyed um, by vehicle traffic where a saturated fine grain material um, has lost strength during saturation and has been ripped up by passing traffic. So effectively, because this was poorly managed, the um, repair of this area will take um, a few days and there's a delayed opportunity here to um, make any progress with dam construction because the bulk of, of the effort will be focused on cleanup and preparation before the new lift can be placed in this part of the dam shell. It makes much better sense to make use of the dry weather conditions to place these fine grained materials on, on the dam shell. So this is an example of good placement activity during these uh, windows of, of fine weather. And it becomes important for the Earthworks team to achieve above um, target placement rates on the dam crest during good weather to get ahead of the schedule because these areas are unworkable under wet conditions. So this is um, the weathered rock oxide material being placed on the dam crest and um, it's apparent to all that the, the practicality of the activities is much easier under these conditions. The dry weather placement activity is the construction of the chimney drain. In this image you can see a shipping container has been modified and the, the floor has been taken out of the shipping container so the crushed aggregate is tipped into the top and the, this container is towed by a dozer according to certain design controls and um, the width and the height of the drain has been customized to meet the design requirement. So the dozer pulls the spreader box according to survey pegs and the material that um, is left trailing behind the shipping container, the spreader box, is a perfect geometry for chimney drain. Key construction and planning practices uh, that is implemented at the Hidden Valley Mine is a clear identification of wet and dry weather placement fronts by the earthworks crews. The dry windows are often short and if you could generalize, they are more common during the morning hours. Um, the placement lots, the construction fronts are adjusted so that they can be completed in a, in a small weather window. So when the weather um, is turning foul, it's important that construction lots are, are kept to um, a small surface area, generally no longer than 50 meters wide, so that they can be sealed off and protected from approaching rain fronts. All placement fronts must be adequately sealed off to manage runoff and erosion. Um, with that goes obviously a, a, an adequate crossfall to protect the areas. Um, it's crucial that the earthworks teams protect construction fronts from traffic after rain as per some of the images that um, I showed a few slides back. And, and the positive at Hidden Valley Mine is that these constraints and practicability issues are well understood by the Harmony team and the dam build schedule is being maintained despite these practical constraints that are out of um, our control. Thank you very much, Mark, for this excellent presentation. Again, if anyone has any questions for Mark, please submit them now through the Q&A box, and I will make sure to pass them on to him.
And as mentioned before, you can download Mark's presentation from the resource list. Also, a link to the recording of this webinar will be sent to you within the next couple of days. And thank you again for attending today's presentation. We look forward to having you join us at our next webinar.